Hello, my lovely edge dwellers. It is Luca Halex here, Power Sorcerer. And it is Saturday, July the 4th. Um, greetings to our, our American neighbors who are celebrating their birthday today. And what a birthday it is. This is a strange year to be celebrating it. Um, certainly a lot of reflection going on. Um, so welcome to everybody. I'm going to take a few minutes here before we start to let everybody collect and find us. I, I don't know about you guys, but I find it a little hard to find the live, bro the live broadcasts or, or uh, whatever, whatever these lives are called. Um, hi, Nina. Hi, Flora. Um, so I, I like to come on a few minutes early and let everybody kind of find us and collect so they're not missing anything right away. So this is Ask Luca Live. Um, we will be, if those of you who are coming to this uh, in the recording, um, we'll start about uh, three minutes in from here. Um, so just so you know, you don't have to watch all of the collecting, everybody, if you are a little short on time and you don't want to do that. Um, so it's great to it's great to have everybody here. We've got lots of questions today, so um, we may not get through all of them. Some of them I may have to push over to next week, but um, lots, like about thirteen, I think. So that's that's a lot more than we have had up until now. So it's great. Hi, Chris. Um, if somebody could let me know, can you hear me? If I tap the microphone, can you hear my microphone taps? I'm trying new microphones here. <laughs> Uh, hi, Robin. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I just, uh, somebody, yes, you can hear the microphone. Yes? Yes? Yay, it's working. All right, so I have lights, I have uh, a thing to hold my camera, and now I have a microphone. So, this is great. Now I don't have to be tethered by, by wires in my ears to my equipment. So that's wonderful. Um, we, we, we don't need to include that in the in the reading today, but yeah. Hi, Pepper. Happy belated birthday. Um, <clears throat> so we have a couple more minutes. It's, uh, um, I'm just watching. There's a little scrolly in the bottom of my screen so I can see who's coming along here. I hope everybody is doing well today. It's a bit cool. <laughs> There's all kinds of comments about this being January in the summer uh, in Vancouver. Um, and we're, when we, we comfort ourselves, it's like, there, there, we don't have forest fires right now, or at least not as many. So, hi, Jen. Uh, but it's still it's cold. <laughs> I'm having a look at my clock here. I think I've got about another minute. Hi, Janet. Oh, is Marigold on here as well? Hi, Marigold. <laughs> You've managed to find it today to watch it live. Yay! We're all we're all making advances advances with our technology here, and and improving our skills and comfort level. Comfort level is a big one. So. Uh, so there's 10 of us here at the moment, which is great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Hi, Ellie. Um, so as I said, um, this is Ask Luca Live. Uh, Saturday, uh, February, not February, it feels like February, uh, July the 4th. Uh, and we're, we're live from 1.30 until 2 um, Pacific time. And I am here um, every week doing this. So uh, please join us next week too if you feel moved to do so. So I'm just going to um, direct you as always to, I have, a, I have a little list of pointers to keep in mind as I do these readings and it is uh, pinned to the top of the group. Um, and also to remind you that any of you can invite people to the group. So the group is gra gradually getting bigger and bigger although not everybody's here every week. So that's one thing. The second, second thing I want to remind you of is that um, your gut feel about what's right for you is more important than anything anybody can say to you, and that includes me. So it doesn't matter who the psychic is or the tarot reader or the palm reader or whoever it is, um, e even your counselor. 
um, they're human beings too, and they can misinterpret things and miss things and have a bad day and whatever. So if something doesn't feel right to you, put it in the holding tank, uh, the proverbial holding tank, and wait until you get some more validation on it before you go ahead and jump on it. Um, also, anything I may tell you about times and dates uh, or about the future are probabilities, and they're based on you continuing to do things in the future the way you've been doing them up until now. But everybody has free will. Um, all of you have free will. It's one of the conditions of the planet that we all have free will, so we can change outcomes. Um, it depends on how much effort we put into it and what the conditions are at the time. So, um, I'm, I'm reading your guides and mine. I set my intention um, always when we do this work um, that, uh, my, my little cheat sheet here, um, that we're going to answer the asked and the intended questions because sometimes the answer we get is the one that we need to have, not the one that we think we want to have. So pay attention to that and to receive answers that are soulfully helpful to all participants and those who will listen later because those who will listen later because time and space are not what we think they are they are actually present with us as we do this right now so that's something for you to keep in mind if you're if you um, miss this live and you come back to it in the recordings you're still included in that ah okay so um that's i think all that we need i will uh, um, stick around for another five minutes at the end of this so if you have any questions for me about uh, working with me or how to find me, um, all of that stuff about what I offer and what I um, and and how you can how you can reach me and make contact um, is all going to be in five minutes at the end. So I'm not going to go into it right now because many of you already know. So uh, pulling in my guides, my higher self, um, the dead pets and dead relatives, uh, the uh, angelic realm. Uh, and the intergalactic realm. So that's what I'm tuning into. And uh, and then we'll see what we get. Um, I'm noticing that some of the questions are books because I think what we do is we is we we write to try and figure out what the question really is. And, and even when we get it written down, we sometimes think, ah, maybe, maybe that's not it, and, and we write a little further. So some of your questions I've condensed down a little bit, and some of them I've left them longer because I think that uh, what the person is talking about is something that all of us are are wondering about, and so I've left the the wandering in there. So uh, let's get started today. Um, our first question is for Pepper, um, and it's a holdover from last week because we didn't have time to get to it last week. So Pepper says, "I wonder if my new career path, uh, which is personal training, is really for me." And if I will eventually reunite with a man I love very, very much, but who is currently stuck, stuck in quotation marks in France. So that technically it's two questions, but we'll, we'll wrap them up together. So <clears throat> Pepper, career, the career choice, um, well, it's a, it's a next step is what they're saying to me. Um, personal training is going to evolve. It's going to evolve beyond what you can imagine it being just at this moment. So we sometimes we go out and we get training to do something and then we find that it evolves over time. So um, I'm, not the, I'm not the psychic or the counselor or the coach that, I, that my technical training taught me to be, but I am now um, a, a, a version of that that's my version. So uh, Pepper, what they're saying to you is, yes, take this next step. Um, you may have to figure out how to adapt it to online maybe do private sessions with people, but something that's an ad adaptation because um, you may not be able to teach uh, big classes for a little while. It's, uh, it's somewhat challenging for us at f for the time being. And then the other, the second part of your question is around uh, your man. Um, my sense is that he, ne he needs to be trapped in France. You don't, but he does. Um, so that's why you're here and he's there. There's something that he's having another look at. I don't know if it's cognizantly or if it's something that's um, on an energetic level, on a spiritual level. But there's something that he's looking at. And it isn't appropriate for him to come back until he's looked at it. So this is entirely the way it's supposed to be. It may look like a glitch, but it's actually not a glitch. Um, so you can rely on that for the time being. There isn't any more information about that without going in and 
uh, poking around in his psyche, which we don't have permission to do today. So that's that's the piece that you can use. So I hope that's I hope that's useful to you. Uh, next person is Harrison, who says, I'm wondering if you see anything interesting ahead in my summer this year, <laughs> which is a nice general question, but um, so Harrison, so I've got Harrison. Okay, so when my head nods and, and flicks to the side, that's, um, that's me, my body, body acts like a pendulum, and so I'm asking questions inside. You're welcome, Peggy. So Harrison, yeah, so... I've got Harrison. Yes, you, you're going to have a very interesting summer, Harrison. Now, interesting is one of those words that <laughs> could mean a whole lot of different things. So, um, uh, what have we got for you? Uh, uh, interesting. <laughs> That's the word they're using. Uh, what's going to happen for you this summer, Harrison, has to do with uh, what you set up last summer. So there's something that you asked for, that you planned for, that you put pieces in place for last summer, which is coming to fruition this summer. Uh, there may be, um, I think what you asked was to, one of the things you asked was to tie up some loose ends around a relationship um, that had, it was like you needed a wrap up, closure, um, final understanding, something along those lines and to, to let go. So my, I, I see you letting go of that this summer and having somewhat of a pause before, I mean, even more than the pause since last summer to this summer, but a pause from, from when you let this go, really let this go this time to um, any relationships that you may move into f from here. Um, there's a, in the next relationship, there's or or it might be another iteration of the one that you're already in that they're not telling me but there's a professional element to it so there's something about both of you being professionals and having a professional respect for one another and maybe maybe that wasn't there before or and I don't know I don't know it, if it's somebody you officially work with but but there is some some element here that has to do with um you really wanting to be with somebody whose profession is unusual, uh, like as yours is, um, or as yours should be. If it isn't already, it should be. Uh, because all of us here, if you end up here and ask Luke Alive, then you're probably an edge dweller, which means that you're probably trying to change the paradigm in some fashion. And that means that you don't entirely fit with the mainstream. So you would always have felt like you were slightly out of step or... Um, that that the shoe the mainstream shoe didn't exactly fit you so that's um so that's the most important thing about this summer is that it's tying up things for so if you go back and have a look at what you were asking for and what you were looking at last summer then you'll get this piece nina uh, nina says uh you once suggested i would do uh, well living in a different in different places seasonally is this still the case yes <laughs> in my head going yes uh yes and um and should I now be taking steps toward that? I'm not sure that you need to do anything big. I have the sense that this may be about going where you're, like dogs follow their noses because they're because they're sniffing and they're looking for scents. If you follow your nose on this one, I think that you'll probably find the places that you need to be. And it will be... I'm seeing one that's place oriented and another one that's person oriented. So it might you might get an invitation from a person to go to a particular place and you might also go through a place and feel like there's an invitation from that place to spend more time there. So um but a definite yes and I got it when you sent the me the message last week. Um when I transferred it into my notes here and I got it again when I was looking through my notes before we started the, the session today. And then I got it again when I read it. So that's three very clear yeses. So yes, seasonally other places. Um, you are a bit of a gypsy. Um, so tying you down in one place is not good. Sometimes you settle in one place and you're quite happy to be there for a period of time. But tying you there makes you feel like somebody's strangling you. Not a nice image, but yeah. Okay, Sue is the next one. Sue is one of the questions that's that's longer, and Sue's been trying to interpret 
body symptoms. And you're not the only one, Sue. So there's other people who've been doing this as well. Um, she says, I'd like feedback on the purpose and meaning of two metaphoric energies flowing around me. These come up when I investigate my shoulder limitation. One is to let die what needs to die, uh, make space and keep clearing. And the other is to call a creation and building. I get the sense that my creation will be informed by this next stage of clearing. So clear and then build. What they're telling me is you don't have to clear and then build. It's not like a building site. Um, you can start building and the, and the act of building will help you do some clearing. Um, and, and it's not that you're doing it wrong. It's just another way for you to approach it. And then Sue says, uh, can you speak to what is important to clear so that I can more easily move into the next phase? Um, uh, so what I think I'm creating will be totally different after I've cleared. Yeah, so they're giving you information about the clearing process. So uh, what do you what do you need to clear? Um, a lot of this is, uh, there may be reminders in this lifetime, but a lot of what you need to clear comes from another lifetime. And it has to do with a resentment, a resentment around an inheritance or an estate or something like that. And there was a vow made in that lifetime that uh, you would never, you would never allow uh, money to control you again, um, especially in the form of an estate or an inheritance. Uh, and there's a second lifetime involved in this. And I always pick up other lifetimes if if the point of control or healing or being able to do something about it is in this lifetime here. So, um, so the, 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 so the first lifetime has to do with an inheritance and the second one has to do with a vow of poverty and, um, and the belief that that would somehow alleviate oh it's the same lifetime yeah so you didn't get the inheritance and so you you gave everything up it was like fine if I can't have it then I won't have anything and I will take a vow of poverty not chastity I should say but poverty so you you went into this life of poverty and that served you in that lifetime it isn't so the vow has continued and you don't need the vow of poverty in this lifetime you want to let that go but to let that go you've also got to let go of the resentment around not getting and this inheritance which by right should have been yours so uh there were reasons why you didn't get it and that and if you go in and explore that lifetime and creatively so I'm seeing you doing it with art artwork um uh, sound, um, color, all of those kinds of things you can play with in order to um, unfold that lifetime. But as soon as you go looking into that lifetime, my feeling is it's ready to be unpacked. This suitcase is not locked. <laughs> the, the trunk, it's a trunk. Um, the, it, it'll be easy for you to get at it. Okay, so that's, that's for Sue. Myrna has a question for us. Uh, will I have success in the new path that I'm taking and will I find the man of my dreams? <laughs> so we get these double-barreled questions. It's career and man. Um, the man question, I think we've already taken care of. Uh, the career question, uh, the car uh, well, will I have success in the new path? It's a new path. I don't know that it's career with a capital C uh, because I think it's a you're just moving into a whole whole new stage in your life and the question here would be what have you always wanted to do that you didn't have enough time to do because you were working because that's what you're that's what you're going to enjoy so this is the question here is what would bring you joy and and um, hi AJ and so as you, as you unfold this, if it's not bringing you joy, put it down and try something else before you get too invested. So that's the, and, and the, and the man thing, I think, I think we've already talked about, and if we haven't, then throw it back at me again and we'll come at that, um, another week. Okay. Janet's question. 
Uh, the number 49. And lots of people have numbers that come up. And sometimes it's like 111, um, 999. And sometimes it's one specific number and it comes up over and over and over again. And I, so I so often get this question and there isn't a one size fits all answer. So I'll, I'll read what Janet says. Uh, number 49 is turning up for me several times every day. I assume it is a message from my guides or angels, but I'm not clear on the meaning. In doing a bit of research on the internet, there is conflicting information about what 49 represents. Can your guides offer any clarification? So the first thing they're saying to me is it's not what it means to other people. It's what it means to you. And my sense is that this is a theme that came up when you were 49. Um, it, it's an age. So it's, uh, so we've got to, we got to go back how many years and have a look at what was going on in your life when you were 49, what were you dealing with and how is that coming up? Not, not, it's not that you need to change your mind about it, but what, what gifts is it offering you now that couldn't mature until now so it's like fruit it's been sitting on the table and you've been waiting for it to ripen and you keep going and giving it a squeeze Um, and it got to a point where you just didn't even squeeze it anymore well now it needs you to go and squeeze it again so that's what the 49 is I'd be I'd be very curious to know um, what you find out from that uh, number 49 okay Robin's question Uh, both my parents have seen an outline or an entity a presence in their suite Um, which is downstairs in Robin's house. Um, They both say it's a woman and I don't feel anything untoward in the house. Is there anything we can do for her, it, them? Are they just hanging out or are they waiting for uh, the parents or is there something that we can do to move them along? I don't get the sense you need to move them along. There, it, it's a, It's not a they, it's a woman. It is a woman. So she, and she's been showing herself um, to your parents as a, as a woman. She's, uh, yeah, your, your mom, I think it has more to do with, no, it doesn't. <laughs> I was going to say it has more to do with your mom, but it doesn't. It's both of them. She's, um, I think she's there, You're, they're not recognizing her. So they see her as a woman, but they're not recognizing who she is. I don't, normally I'd say that's a ghost, but I'm not feeling that that's a ghost. It feels like it's an entity. Oh, Janet just says she looked at the clock as I finished providing my answer and it was 149. Yeah, just in case you needed the 49 reinforced. Yeah, so Robin, I sense that this that this woman, this spirit is there to <clears throat> it's to ease a transition. And it doesn't mean that the transition is right around the corner right now, but I think that your mother has had um, some opportunities to stare death in the eye over the last few years. And this is giving her some level of comfort around um, what it's going to be like to make the transition. And I, I, I have the feeling that your mother is quite sensitive as well. And I think that she could have a conversation with this spirit about death. So if she went to her and said, what do you have to say to me about death? Um, do you have something to say to me about death? Um, um, and, what's, and what's your connection to me? She might get some answers. And it may be that she goes into her sort of slightly altered state when she's doing something that's creative. So engaging in in her creative pursuits around this spirit and inviting the spirit in to be part of that um, may help with it. But that's the sense I get. I don't think it's a ghost. I mean, it's a ghost in that it's dead, but but it's not it's not uh, one of those uh, dead people who doesn't know they're dead and is just hanging around and looking for attention. I don't think it's that. I think it has something specific to say, <clears throat> not just to your mother and about her her death eventually down the road, but also to um, her partner about that and and um, what that's going to mean for both of them and ha- and how they can work with that because I think they have the ability to work with it. Okay, so that's Robin. Uh, Chris, <clears throat> Chris says, and this is um, a longer one that I have condensed down a little bit. So Chris says, over the past five years, I've lost literally everything. 
my sense of self, body, uh, self, body image, my employment, my family, my marriage, and my health. I feel that things have somewhat stabilized and that it's time for me to take the next step. Do you have any guidance for me? Boy, did you need to clear the decks. And you cleared the decks. But I also have the feeling that you are a different person now and that um, that was part of your plan when you came into this lifetime was that you would get to a certain stage and then you would clear the decks and you've cleared them. So now the question is, if you get to start fresh, because how many of us say, God, I wish I could just start fresh. Um, and, and we back off from it because we've got friends and loved ones and things we've built and, you know, jobs and, and obligations to people and responsibilities. So we feel we can't do that. But you don't have any of that now. It's like, whoosh, it's been, it's been completely swept away and cleared. So uh, you do have the opportunity to start with a clean slate now. So be really intentional about what you want and how you would like to have it and then and then set about creating it because I think that the energy is just it'll be poof, it's it's ready to go. Um, but but be intentional and my belief is that if you set your intention everything follows intention. So go through it on all the different levels. What do you want in the in the physical world? What do you want emotionally? What do you want um, in terms of ideas, what what um, what ideas are you building in blueprint form first? Because that's also intention, right? What do you want energetically and spiritually? What do you want in terms of relationships? The whole the whole nine yards, and and the more you can employ creativity, um, it, it might be some form of um, movement, some something like that. But they're saying use all your senses uh, to to come up with what it is that you would like to have next. All right, so that's for you, Chris. And I, I should say to all of you, and we've got we've got about eight more minutes left here today, um, that um, the answers that you're getting to these questions are short answers because this is a short answer format. So that doesn't mean that there isn't more information, but there's only so much information that we can convey in this form. Um, but this is enough to get you started to 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 um, boost, give you that little power boost, the, the little aha, to open a door to, um, to start the flow again. And then, you know, if you want, if you have more questions, then by all means, stick around to the end and I can talk about um, how else we can work together so that uh, you can get more details if you need them. And it may be that it just isn't time for those yet. Okay, Lisa's question is, <clears throat> and this one I've, I've condensed down as well. Having been alone and celibate for a number of years now and content knowing that I'm here to work out and heal a specific past life, I'd like to know, will love, romantic love, ever be in my future again? <clears throat> Excuse me, do I know him? Uh, the one person from this past life, because she, um, Lisa thinks there's somebody um, in this lifetime who has some unresolved stuff, with whom she has unresolved stuff from another lifetime. Um, and and this person has pulled away, um, and uh, Lisa believes that it's because she was communicating too much and might have overwhelmed him. Um, you're learning in this lifetime, Lisa, about willpower, uh, because you have very you have very strong energy, and you have very hi Judy, you have very very strong willpower. And so you can push things and, and you've been experimenting with this over a number of lifetimes. And in one of those lifetimes, you pushed something, um, the rule around this, if you could say a rule, um, guidance from, from, um, a universal realm is that what, what is, um, coercive, manipulative, um, not, not respectful is when we push our will on someone else, when the message that we've been getting back from them is, hi Alberta, is no, don't, don't do that. It, I don't want to go there. So we may not always like the answer that the other person gives us, but they have the right to give us that answer, even if we feel that they made an agreement with us and they're not honoring it in this lifetime or before we even came in when we were sitting up there in our proverbial puffy white cloud. So it's, it's important that we honor 
um, people's no's. And you can say no in lots of different ways. It isn't just what you're able to say with your words. Um, if, if a person removes themselves, if they stop responding to your calls or messages or whatever it is, that is a no. And, and we have to honor that. Um, so that's the, that's the biggest thing I get for you, Lisa, is that, um, that this, that our, we use our willpower to determine what it is we would like. And then to, then we marshal all our resources, including our intellectual resources and, and our energetic ones. And we set about getting what we want, but we have to be respectful of other people also doing that in their lives. And if we come to the um, to the fence around somebody's life and they say no there's no gate in this fence for you then we have to honor that so that and that's often not what we want to hear and we may feel that we've got something else that that needs to be addressed and the person won't address it with us there isn't a whole lot we can go up what I call up and over which means that we can talk to the person's higher self uh, with permission, of course, so you can knock on their higher self door and talk to them there. But it's um, it's important to honor other people's boundaries as much as we would like to have them honor ours. So that's yours, Lisa. Um, so I've got, I think I've got time for one or two more. Uh, Jen's question is, um, how do I clear or at least minimize this intense neck and back pain? Uh, pain pain and then there's, there's a there's a Freudian slip for you um plain um is my lesson learned yet uh it it's a it is a lesson and it isn't learned yet uh but it's not that task mastery <laughs> it's um they're not they're not standing over you wagging a finger and saying we're not taking the pain away till you get this um, you've created the pain, um, which I know is the thing that we're all afraid of, right? That we've created this, whatever this horrible thing is that we can't get rid of. And I know that Sue would so, Sue would so commiserate with you on this one. Um, so what is it that, uh, neck and back pain and it's what they're giving me is plain. It's on another plane. So my sense is that you need to go to another plane of existence, as in P-L-A-N-E, not A-I. Uh, you need to go to that plane to work with it, to play with it, and see what it has to show you. So um, see what it turns into when you get playful with it on another plane. And... Uh, my sense is it's it's ready to be released, but it can't. You're not willing to release it until you don't ever have to have it come back again. So play, if play is what I'm getting, and play on another plane, and that's and that's all they're saying about that. So I'm assuming yes, you'll know what that other plane is. Um, feels like it could be auditory. There's an auditory component to this because they're pointing on this level. <laughs> so here. Okay. Um, so, and I've got one, two, three more questions. Um, so let me see if I can do one more. Um, Colleen, I'd like to know how long we will be living at our current place. Uh, three. I'm getting a three. Uh, when will we sell our home and move? Uh, is it... It's not three weeks, not three months, not three years, um, th but three. Oh, okay. So 300 days is what I'm getting. Uh, and that's subject to change because uh, everything is in flux right now. Uh, and it may be that you get your new place before you sell the one that you're in. Uh, so be open to that possibility. You might need to get a bridging loan. Like there, there's something there. But, uh, but I think that there, it's going to come in the, in the opposite way from the way you would prefer. Uh, but you'll be taken care of, right? So you're not going to be out on the street. Um, you might, you might have two homes that you have to figure out how to how to juggle, um, for just a for just a little while. Um, so I'm going to see if I can squeeze in this last this last question. And, and Grace, your question, I think, is going to have to go 
uh, to to next week uh, because I think it'll take a little bit longer than just a, a brief um, piece here. And that means that we will have got through most all of the questions today, which pleases me no end. Okay, this one is for Flora. Uh, I'm wondering if there's anything you can tell me about the man that's meant for me. When and where do you see him in my life? In the meantime, any thoughts on what I should be doing? There isn't anything you should be doing except living your life and enjoying it. Um, the man that's meant for you, I think there's going to be two men who are both possibilities and who both would be equally good for you. And it's going to be up to you to choose and both of them will uh, be as gracious as they can possibly be about about not being chosen whichever one it is that you don't choose but I don't have the feeling that they're that they're there and that this is something that you're that you're dealing with right in the present moment um so he said when and where do you see him in my life I see both of them it feels like summertime I'm not sure if it's this no it's not this summer so it could be next summer or it's in a summer season so you might travel somewhere where it is summer uh, but that's not straightforward either because I don't get the sense that you're just going to meet two people on hall when you're on holiday somewhere. So there's, but there's, there's two, I'm getting two. Both of them would be just as good. You're just going to have to decide which one calls to you, to your heart the most, which is going to be a little bit challenging to, because you're both, you're going to love both of them. Um, it's a, a, an embarrassment of riches. Uh, and, and it, and it will, um, and it, it'll be summer somewhere, wherever it is, it'll be summer. So that, I, I hope that gives you something that's helpful. And Grace, you're going to be top of the list, um, for next week. So that's all of our questions for this time. Uh, my apologies that I went a, a few minutes over. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, I will be sticking around. This is the end of today's uh, uh, episode 16. And I will I will um, say a few words about how you can reach me if you would like to do that. But if there's any of you here who already know all of that stuff and you want to say so long for this week, that's absolutely wonderful. Thank you for joining us. Um, so I'll wait a few minutes and see if there's anybody left who um, needs to hear about this. Uh so I don't, I don't see anybody um, signing off yet. So let me just, you're, you are all very welcome. This is, it's absolutely my pleasure um, to do this, as you can probably tell. Um, <laughs> hi, Charlene. Charlene, uh, yeah, you can watch it. Any, anything, if you can, so those of you who came in late, you can watch it in the, in the recording, and I will have that up by by three o'clock it takes me a little while to download it and upload it and put everything together but by three o'clock it should be up so that you can so that you can watch it um so I, I during the covid virus time however long that's going to stretch on for my intuition is telling me that it's going to go until january but i have um, revamped my rate structure so that you and i can use our intuition in terms of determining what the rate should be the only exception to that is um, my ping mini readings, which are um, thirty dollars for fifteen minutes, and and you can book that through my website. Um, if you'd like to, uh, there's two arms to what I do. One of them is doing readings, so I can do one-on-one -on -one ping mini readings. I can do hour-long readings, and I can also do um, uh, circles, reading circles online. Um, if anybody would like to host one, and I'm happy to talk about that as well. Hi Zoe. Um, uh, and then the other part of what I do is teaching people to um, listen to, uh, be familiar with, capitalize on their intuition. And I can do that in two ways. One of them is with um, coaching, uh, which I call um, a power in your back pocket. And the other one is through a circle of people that right now will be a virtual circle because we would be doing it online. Um, when I've got six people together who can all meet for a year, I spread this out over a year, it's designed to be integrated into your life. Um, and it builds a community of people who are also doing what you're doing so that you have that supportive community. And you, and you build skills and you build experience and you build a knowledge base and um, and a lot of tools. So, and I'm more than happy to talk about that. So, any of any of these things that I offer 
um, you can set up a, an appointment with me uh, called an exploratory session, and I'm happy to talk to you about how it works, um, and, that, and those are free of charge. And with the, with the coaching sessions, I actually do some work with you. It's a 90-minute session, so you can find out what it's like to work with me. So that's because um, I don't want anybody to put any money down on the table until they're sure that that's what they want to be doing. So that's all of all of those pieces. You can. Um, uh, I'm just about to start a blog, a new blog, which um, I'm doing with a friend of mine who's living in Germany. Um, so I'm getting that put together, and I will announce that on on Facebook and on Instagram as soon as it's good to go. So we're we're playing with setting it all up on Squarespace, and I'm I'm on another steep learning curve. So that's going to be great fun, and I'm continuing to work away on my on my website. Um, so I think that's all I have to tell you about today. Do not be afraid to talk to me about what you can afford to pay me. I am, I'm not going to, after we have the conversation, I'm not going to be pissed off with you if you don't book a session with me. Um, this is all exploratory. It's all about building trust and building relationships. And now may not be at the right time, but that doesn't mean I'm not willing to talk to you about it. So, um, you got nothing to lose. So it's been my great pleasure to have you with us uh, today here, um, creating our virtual group online. I'll be back next Saturday at 1.30 Pacific time until 2. And until then, um, take, take great care of yourselves in all the ways possible.